Hey, what's up everybody? Right now we're kind of in a weird place with the main fighting game titles because Tekken 8 just got a new balance patch update but we are going to get one more major balance update in June which is going to improve defense and we're all waiting for the season 2 balance patch for Street Fighter 6. So I kind of wanted to use this as an opportunity to put out some new types of content for my channel that I haven't quite gotten a chance to do yet. So far I focused mainly on guides but I kind of want to delve more into both the technical aspect of fighting games and also the psychological aspect of that. A couple of weeks ago I came across a great document on Twitter posted by Mikey GFXX and Mikey is a psychology student and what Mikey did was he used what he's learned in psychology and through his experience in fighting games to put together a document that goes over how we can use the basic principles of psychology to better help ourselves train and to improve as fighting game players both on a competitive level and also for avoiding things like burnout which is something a lot of highly competitive people go through and I know my channel has basically focused on more short form guide content so this is a little bit different from my usual style and it is a bit longer but I hope you stick around to the end because I had a great discussion with Mikey and he brought up some amazing points that I think everybody should really hear and I think this interview will help some of you who are kind of struggling on the more psychological aspect of fighting games rather than the technical ones. So I hope you enjoy and let's get right into it. Okay sweet so we got Mikey here on Discord chat and he just put up a document talking about how people can learn games and the whole learning process and what you can do to help improve your learning ability in fighting games. So before we get into this, tell me a little bit about yourself, um, what games do you play, how long have you been playing, where are you from, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm from Long Island, New York. Um, I've been playing fighting games now for eight years. I started with Street Fighter V. My main games now are Third Strike and KOF and uh, yeah, I've been traveling to majors bumming it around, streaming, competing for a, for a very long time. So I figured for this document, I would take my um, my background in psychology, which I'm currently studying and pursuing my undergrad degrees in and um, use it as a creative outlet so I could better help people to improve. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's get yeah. into your, uh, your document here. So for those of you who don't know, Mikey posted a document on Google Docs and on Twitter, and it's called The Learning Process. And he goes over what it means to learn, what you can do to improve, the different ways of developing your skills, and conditioning in fighting games. So Mikey, if you can just give a quick overview about this, and just, I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna give the floor to you. Go ahead and talk about it. So pretty much, I am a psychology student, and I absolutely love what I'm studying. And I also think that fighting games while they have a lot of tutorials, I feel like it's mostly mechanical based where it's like, you do this combo, you get this knockdown, you do this. I don't think that anyone has really talked about the psychological aspect of fighting games. You know, your mentality, the learning process, how important your social circles are in the FGC, because C, community, it's kind of in the name and also how you talk to yourself and how you are able to frame your thought process around different things. So I've used a child psychology theory from Lev Vygotsky called the Zone of Proximal Development. It's basically a way to teach children how to be able to do tasks on their own from starting them with a not more knowledgeable other is what it's called, but basically what that essentially is in layman's terms is somebody who's gonna show you how to do it. And then as you build competence up in this specific task, your more knowledgeable other is less hands-on with you. And that is supposed to build the competence and the confidence within yourself to where if you have a question about something, it could be frame data, matchup, um, the optimal combo, you are equipped to go out into training mode or go out into a tournament setting by yourself and learn and grow um, self-sufficiently. So I think what you're kind of getting at is your idea for fighting games is that there's more of like a master and student situation is like a learning development is a little bit better than something else like trying to learn on your own like you need you need a mentor you need somebody more knowledgeable than you to show you what to do so it's hard to learn in a bubble you can't really advance by yourself or you can get better by yourself but there's only so far you can go until you need the advice or the mentorship of somebody more knowledgeable than you Pretty much, I wouldn't be anywhere close to where I am now if it wasn't for my friends, you know, beating my ass and fighting games, teaching me stuff, how to get better, and giving me confidence in myself to not be afraid to go to a major by myself or not be afraid to open up training mode and look at things like frame data, swift punishes, spacing, uh, weird micro interactions and stuff like that. 
I feel like a lot of people, especially on the internet, take away the human factor of fighting games and how to improve because it's so easy to just go on a losing streak and ranked and just be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. This dude sucks. I would smoke his shit offline. Everybody's guilty of that, including me. But I feel like if you can take yourself out of that and you're able to find a good, you know, I don't want to say click, but a good community of players, it could be online, it could be offline. You are able to learn and progress as a player a lot faster. And the beauty of the internet is that you can find people relatively easily. Twitter's not only just going to be used for tech videos anymore. You can use it to find local people. You can use it to find online tournaments. You can use it to find training mode, like training mode discords. And my big thing with this paper that I want to push is be kind to other people, be kind to yourself, and the improvements will come gradually. And everybody grows at their own pace. You have some people that have never won a local and have been playing since Street Fighter 4 Vanilla. Then you have some people that started with Street Fighter 6 and they're already making it out of pools and majors and winning their local. The spectrum of growth and everybody's own growth is completely different. It's an individual thing. I don't think you could ever classify or quantify like the rate of progress for everybody. So you brought up some good points. There are two things I want to touch on there. The first thing I'm going to say is what is your advice or using your learning process that you posted online? What advice would you give to somebody who is hard stuck at a certain rank? Let's say you bought Street Fighter 6 when the game came out and you're hard stuck at platinum. You can't get better. What would your and they're trying they're actually trying like they're going into practice mode. They're trying to learn their frame traps. They're trying to get better but maybe they're not part of a community yet. They're just playing online and maybe they're just playing with some of their friends and their friends are all kind of the same level. For those people who've been playing for a long time and are hard stuck, what are some common issues that you see that are holding them back? And what would your advice be to help them break through that plateau? The community is the biggest thing. You always have to constantly be going out and trying to talk to new people. If they're worse than you or better than you or the same level as you, I feel like people only really want to play in their little circle sometimes, unless it's a tournament. Another thing is when you get more people to watch your replays or you get to play more people, they're able to give you advice that you don't see because you only have one set of eyes. If you have more sets of eyes on it and people that don't think differently or people that do think differently rather, they're able to point out more um, logical fallacies in your decision making in your right. Yeah, that's something that I did right in this through feedback and validation in the in the proximal development section is that you are a that a more experienced player is able to tell you what that you're doing wrong. Where is it you're giving up the corner when you can keep the corner. You're not going for the optimal combo or hey that's minus you can punish that. If you have a more experienced player helping to guide you, or even just, you know, people around your skill level that may be playing different characters or the same character, a big thing is collaboration and talking to people, I would say. So keep to keep on going on that topic, uh, just talk about myself personally. I'm a very big self-learner. A lot of things I've done in my life, I've learned by myself. And um, I'm very self-motivated. I like to set small goals for myself. And once I accomplish those small goals, I move on to something bigger. Uh, I think most people understand that, but I think another big thing that a lot of people uh, struggle with, and it's something that you put in your guide, is dealing with losses and losing motivation. And for me personally, I know when I stream, my, my quality of gameplay takes a significant hit when I'm streaming because it's hard to both engage with the community uh, have a good conversation, be entertaining, and also to play well, especially in a game like Street Fighter 6, where there's a lot of like Twitch reaction stuff going on, it's like drive impact and things like that. But when I'm playing on stream, a comment I get from my viewers very often is, how are you so positive? How are you always so happy? Like why, even though you're losing sometimes, why are you still having fun? I get angry. I rage when I lose. I either rage at my opponent or I rage at myself. And that doesn't happen to me. And before I explain why it doesn't happen to me, can you explain how you think you people can use your model to avoid uh, demotivation and getting mad at themselves? So nobody likes to lose. Losing is not a very good feeling, especially when in a competitive thing like fighting games, it's one on one. So you don't have the crutch that like League players or Overwatch players or Apex players have where it's, oh, my fucking teammate sucks or whatever. When you lose, it's your own fault and that stinks 
infinitely worse that you have to take that self-accountability. And there also are a lot of, especially online, there's a lot of outside factors. I know that when I play and my parents open the door and start talking to me when I'm playing, I my brain goes haywire and I lose and it ends up costing me the game. Or you get a bad connection and it just, or your opponent decides, you know, to teabag you. Um, I would say to take losses better, the biggest piece of advice that I tell everybody is nobody ever wins 100% of the time. And also, if you're able to set those small goals of hitting a specific combo, where I'm going to try this frame trap out, or I'm going to go for this, it'll help you in the long run because people are very fixated on instant gratification in those short-term things. You can win a first to two and scrub somebody out, yeah, but if that person wants to run the first to five with you after for 50 bucks, are you able to adapt to that? And if you lose, how is that going to make you feel? It's, it's going to make you feel like shit. I would say to avoid the feelings of burnout, breaks are always needed. Um, I have a thing where before I go to a major, it could be like a small regional or a combo breaker ECT type of event. I will not play fighting games for a week before. I will not touch a fighting game. I'm going to boot up Skyrim. I'm going to turn my brain off and I'm going to mine iron ore for 10 hours a day and just relax. <laughs> uh, I Breaks are very much needed, but also this is something that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. I don't really care. You're not playing this game to pay your bills. It's not that serious. For I get it competitiveness is fun you know I, I like competing I like the feeling of winning but I also know that I'm not going to win every time and I think that people need to just understand that it's okay to lose and no one's going to look at you differently if you win or if you lose a set that's a really good point I think that's something I think people take it a little bit too seriously and they forget the the fun part of it I mean, I mean at the end of the day Unless you're part of that 0.1 or 0.01 percent of players who are making a living with this and who are at a level where they're strong enough to pay the bills with this game, most people you're playing for fun and you're playing for your own self gratitude or for your own means of entertainment or to enjoy time with your friends and traveling together, playing together to with your community and to just make memories. Like some the best memories that I have in the FGC. It's not winning my first local. It's not when I got um, 17th at Combo Breaker last year. It's driving from Long Island to Chicago and then driving from Long Island to Florida for CEO. And I remember being, you know, 17, 18 and some of the most fun I had when I was sharing a hotel room with like nine people sleeping in a bathtub. Like those are some <laughs> of the best those are some of like the greatest memories I have is just because I wasn't focused on winning. I wasn't focused on competing. Like people forget to take in the fact that you have a social life. You have a third space for yourself to go to with your friends. And the thing is the people in my local, we don't just see each other, you know, Saturday nights or Monday nights when we have a session, we're in discord every night talking to each other where we've invited each other to people's weddings. Like I've been invited to people that I met at my local, their weddings. I celebrate birthdays with them. I celebrate holidays with these people. We are a family. And that's something that I appreciate the most. And those are some of just the best times I've ever had in the FGC. It's not the tournament itself. It's the people. Like I said, sleeping in bathtubs and hotel lobbies in the backseat of people's cars when I was 17 to 18. Those are some of the best memories I've ever had. And I, I would never do anything differently. But when it comes to that thing that you pointed out over uh, just wanting to win, and there's a part in this document where I actually do talk about that. If you focus on winning, being one player, just winning your local, making it out of pool, you limit yourself in such a way that it's almost detrimental to your own mental health to an extent. Because if you go and lose to the same person every week and your only goal is I want to beat them. I got to beat them. When somebody else beats you that, you know, you may not think that is as good as you, it's going to ruin your fucking night. And I feel like when people 
start to realize that this is supposed to be fun and this person is better than me, I don't just want to beat them. I want to learn from them because we have a lot of people in my local that are good in a ton of different games. We have really good Guilty Gear players, amazing KOF players, and you know, we have really good Street Fighter players. We have Legacy players too. And I feel like if people were to stop being, if you weren't so self-absorbed in winning and trying to be the best, it's okay to try to be the best, but you also have to realize that progress is never linear especially on an individual level and once you realize that this is a game i'm having fun and i can learn something from everybody it will genuinely make your tournament experience and your online experience completely better yeah i, I totally agree with everything you just said i think everything you touched on is really important and i think at the end of the day it all comes back to understanding that you can't be amazing right away that we all have our own um we all take a different amount of time to get better and even sometimes if you don't feel like you're getting better it doesn't mean you're not getting better because as you just pointed out progress isn't linear so sometimes even if you're losing to the same person every week in your local or online that person is also getting better every week and if you're still losing to them it doesn't mean you're not getting better because had that person stayed at the exact same level the whole time and your level had increased, eventually you will beat them. But you're both progressing at the same time and you're both pushing each other to get better. So maybe if you go to a tournament or you go on to ranked and you fight somebody who plays the same character as somebody you always lose to, you might actually find that you're winning a lot against that character, even though it's somebody you struggle with in your local or in your in your scene or with your friends because you are getting better. You just don't feel it. It's definitely that. And it's also just the thing of when it comes to competing as somebody that's seen a lot of people in the FGC and has been around a ton of people at locals and at uh, majors and stuff. The people that I see that I started with with Street Fighter V, not started together, but the people that I knew that started with Street Fighter V like me that are still around, they're some of the happiest people I've ever met. They, they're just like, listen, it's a new game. I may suck at first, but I don't really care. And then there's people at my, not at my local, but I've seen on Twitter or in discords just salt tweet salt post like they lose and they immediately take to like our, our group chats and they're just like this motherfucker bro like this dude's a fucking moron da, 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 da. and when you try to give them advice they have that that weird thing in their mind where it's like well if they're doing x and i do y they can just do z instead and you can you can never really like get through to those people and it's just a weird fucking thing to experience mm -hmm. yeah i i Totally agree, and I've come across people like that myself. Uh, this is getting a little bit long now, and this is going to be hell for me to edit. So let me just last, ask you my last two questions here. Um, okay. You touched on some points where common issues that people who are trying to learn experience. Let's kind of flip this around a little bit. Can you tell me any common habits or common traits that you've noticed in people who are really good at picking up games, like new games, or really good at playing multiple games? And what are some things you've noticed that they use to learn and to get better really quickly? They're very open to losing. They're not salty about it, or they minimize the salt and the anger. They're very much not afraid to ask questions and have conversations with people that are better than them or that are around the same skill level or worse than them. They are very sociable. They are very, it's very much easy to talk to somebody that is good at multiple games. And one thing that they do have uh, that I wish I had is um, time management. I notice people that play multiple games are able to better make a lot better use of their time uh, across all these different games. The big thing about the psychology of a fighting game player is that you have to realize that since you're not playing this for money, you are choosing to spend time playing these games. You are not making money to pay your bills. This is a social thing for a lot of people. It is for me. Some of the only times I leave the house that aren't for work or for the gym or for school are to go out and play fighting games. I think people, and this, is, this isn't this is really a psychological thing, this is more of a, of a spiritual thing because, you know, one of my best friends uh, growing up, his family was Buddhist and I would hang out with them and we would have, you know, they would teach me, his parents would sit down and like show me a lot of different things about their culture. And one of the biggest things they said 
to me that stuck with me years later is your sense of self is very limiting, but it's also very free. And when I asked him that, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because, you know, when you're uh, like 12 or 13, it's a very like contradictory thing to hear. And they said, when you put expectations on yourself or desires on yourself, you're ultimately chaining yourself down. But once you get rid of those and you can kind of hit that Nirvana point where it's like nothing may matter, but everything does to an extent, uh, that's when you're able to really grow and flourish. And I can relate that to fighting games where it's like, when I enter a tournament, whatever happens, happens, man. I can make it out of pools, I can win the local, or I can go 0-2, I don't care. Or, you know, I can just not go and just hang out with my friends. And when I start to get those feelings of burnout or whatever, just stop playing and just go and hang out and relax. Yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying with that. And I think it can be really kind of broken down in, in very simple terms and not to put down that Buddhist way of thinking, which I think is fantastic. But I think the important thing is to enjoy the journey and not just worry about the goal. I mean, speaking personally for me, I enjoy going to training mode. I enjoy talking to my friends and learning about fighting games or even for something like gym. You know, I do competitive bodybuilding. For me, okay, yeah, do I, do I get excited to eat that fifth meal of rice, chicken, and broccoli cold out of the fridge, just like that. It's not the most delicious thing, but you know what? I do it because I enjoy the whole process. And if you can't, if you're not the kind of person who can sit there and be like, you know what, rice, uh, rice, broccoli, and chicken cold out of my freezer pack when I'm out at work or school, that's hype. I'm a bodybuilder. This is cool. If you don't enjoy that part, then you're never going to get to your end goal because you have to enjoy the whole journey. And it doesn't matter if you win or if you lose. It's part of the whole process and enjoying the feeling of growth and enjoy the feeling of setting a, setting a goal for yourself and having the courage and the self-respect to put yourself through hardship, but to come out better than you were when you went into it. I always just tell people, I'm like, listen, get in the community discord. Don't be afraid to talk to people. All of us here are super welcoming. And if you have any questions about how, what time the brackets start, whether it's gameplay stuff or whatever just let me know and i've i have sat down with a lot of the newer players with six and i've been able to help them you know i will take the time out of my day to sit in a discord with my friends and watch them play in an online tournament and give them advice like hey listen stop doing that or yo he's teching every time you do jab shimmy his ass i feel like the takeaway with this document for me is the FUC is a wonderful place. I have made some of the best memories of my life and met people that I consider family here. If you are willing to get your ass beat, not take yourself and the game so seriously and understand that you shouldn't be focused on beating one person or winning your local or making it out of pools, you should just be focused on what can you do better. And like, you need to be able to kind of build it like a pair like a pyramid where the really big things that you want that aren't super important are at the top but the lower you get the more fundamental it is and the more it'll benefit you in the long run mm -hmm. that's that's a good point thank you so much mikey for coming out to this talk today and talking to us about your learning process document if you guys haven't checked it out please check it out the link is going to be in the description check it out and i'm sure it's going to help a lot of people improve and at least help you have a mindset about how you can learn and how you can better improve at fighting games now before we end this talk mikey do you want to give a shout out to your local scene or to yourself some twitter things or anything like that social media yeah uh i'm from long island come through to burst collectors uh 2705 east hepset turnpike levittown new york we're there every single saturday um the document also will be updated uh periodically with new topics and new everything i'm currently trying to work on a burnout um and mental health side of fighting game stuff if you want to follow me on twitter it's um at mikey gf xx there's two x's at the end of it and um yeah and if you guys are going to be at combo breaker ect i'll be there be sure to say what's up to me we also are running our own regional in long island back no bev um that is going to be june 15th through the 16th and uh yeah i'm kind of just shamelessly plugging my local myself right. uh, and what yeah. games are going to be at that regional uh we're going to have street fighter 6 with a 600 pop bonus 
Tekken 8 with a $500 pop bonus, Uni 2 with a $500 pop bonus, Marvel 3 with a, I think it's a $600 pop bonus, um, KOF with 250 and Guilty Gear Strive for 100 We also have a hotel block set up, so if you're commuting from far away, you can get a hotel near the venue and everything. It's a two-day event. And it's going to be absolutely fire. That's fantastic. And I'll put a link to all that stuff in the description of this video. So, Mikey, thank you so much for coming out today. It was great talking to you. And good luck with everything you're doing in the future. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. 100%. Have a good one, man. Take it easy, bro.